Hey everybody, Brad here from bradhussey.ca and codecollege.ca. Welcome back to the Bootstrap 4 tutorial. In this video, we're going to be coding the carousel section of our final project number one. All right, so this is the carousel. It's full width. It's pretty much full height. Uh, if, if your browser was taller, it wouldn't be full height, but it's actually quite a large carousel, as you can see as I scroll right here. Um, and I wanted that just for stylistic purposes, just to show you, I've had a lot of students ask me, how do I make my carousels full width? And so I just wanted to, uh, I wanted to show you how to do that. It's, it's very, very easy. Uh, and so, yeah, as you can see here, this is how it works. I can click these little arrows right here. Uh, we have basic captions. You also have this little pagination sort of nav, um, dots here. And it's very, it's very simple and very straightforward. And so if you were to go to the carousel, uh, docs here in the uh, alpha docs of bootstrap 4 and then you just head to the components section uh, and if you click on carousel down here that will take you to the carousel page right here and so this is all the documentation of the carousel in bootstrap 4 it's pretty much the same as bootstrap 3 uh, but uh, i do encourage you as always to read through the documentation because there are a lot of features um, that you may want to use regarding javascript and jquery the different methods you can use in javascript or jQuery and the different kind of options and display options and just here, here are the examples it's pretty much the same as what I have uh, on the demo site and this is the code and you can go ahead and copy that if you wanted that specific example you can also have optional captions which we will be using just so you can see how it works by using the carousel caption with any uh, within the carousel item divs like so and they also have some uh, some notes here about accessibility so the carousel component is not generally compliant with accessibility standards. So if you need to be compliant, if you're building a site that uh, the client requests, requests that it be 100% compliant uh, regarding accessibility, then uh, you're going to have to use something else. But for the most part, it's really great uh, and you shouldn't have any problems using carousel. And so we're going to jump in and we're going to start coding that carousel. But what I want you to do to save just a little bit of time and this isn't just um, me trying to cut any corners or anything. This is actually what I do and a lot of bootstrap developers do because, hey, you don't need to reinvent the wheel and you don't want to make any mistakes. Just copy their skeleton of the carousel and then we're going to we're going to modify it from there. It's going to be pretty, pretty easy, uh, but this saves a lot of time. So copy that to your clipboard, head back to your code editor and then under your nav is where we're going to add our carousel and I'm going to hit paste. Because all the tabbing uh, is all off here, I'm going to fix that up. So just give me a moment. All right. And there we go. We got everything all lined up uh, properly for me. And so now what we're going to do, I'm not just going to use that div. I should have actually told you to do this in the first place, but I'm going to add a section with the ID of carousel. And I'm going to wrap that around the carousel, all that markup that we just pasted in there. So I'm going to put that down here. And that's wrapping the carousel. Perfect. Now I'm also going to change the ID of the carousel itself from carousel example generic because that's a, that's not a very good ID to carousel dash home. And I'm going to leave carousel slide as the classes and data ride carousel. These are all bootstrap attributes uh, within the HTML element here to allow the, the carousel to work properly. And then we have our ordered list, which is the carousel indicators. And those are those little dots, those little circles that uh, indicate what slide you're on within the carousel. Now you do need to change carousel example generic to the ID of the carousel itself. So the data target needs to be targeting the actual carousel. So this, this wouldn't work unless you changed it to carousel home. Now a cool thing with brackets is you can batch edit multiple lines, which is really cool. So I'm just going to, I'm going to show you that. And so I'm going to hold command on the keyboard here, and then I'm going to click on the line, the specific with the cursor here of where I want to edit. And I want to do it on multiple lines. So since these are the same, I'm going to edit that. And I'm going to remove this one because that's not what I want to edit. So I'm going to edit these three lines simultaneously. Super cool. A lot of code editors do this. Coda2 does this, brackets. Uh, I know uh, Sublime Text and a number of other editors have their own way of doing this. Pretty much it's the same way. It's probably holding command and choosing multiple lines, but you may want to check the documentation um, 
for your specific code editor. If you're using brackets, it's just hold command and click on the lines you want to edit and you can edit multiple lines. Super cool. Carousel home. So those indicators should work now. Carousel inner, uh, the role list box this is all bootstrap attributes. Carousel item active, we're good to go. Now image data source, uh, we're gonna change this from data source to just source. Data source, they use that in the documentation uh, to bring up their their uh, placeholder images or something like that. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not exactly sure why they're using data source. Um, maybe there's a specific reason, but we're just gonna use source. And we're gonna change that to the actual source of the images that we have in our image folder. The first one we're gonna use image, uh, we're gonna use woman, camera, uh, to be accessible, we're going to add uh, into the alt attribute here um, some, some actual text. Woman taking picture with a camera. And then again in here in the next one, we're going to uh, image and then spider web. And then we'll just add some alt text here in the alt attribute. A wet spider web. And then in the third source here, we're going to go for image slash heart hand dot JPG. Two hands making a heart. Okay, now I want to add carousel captions. Now, if you briefly remember, I mentioned uh, in the docs there in the bootstrap for docs, you can add captions by adding the div of the class of carousel, carousel dash caption caption to the uh, carousel item div here. So this is all you have to do, just follow along. We're gonna add a div with the class of carousel-caption within the carousel item, as you can see here. And then in there, the all you really need to do is just put whatever you want as the caption. Uh, a very common and basic example would just be a level three heading, a woman with a camera, and then a paragraph tag she is probably taking a picture. Very insightful. And now we're gonna do the same thing. And uh, so I don't have to be a hero here. I'm just gonna copy and paste. And there we go. And we're just gonna change this next one to down came the rain. And perhaps you can guess the next part. And washed the spider out. And we're going to do the same here for the third item. And this one will be making love and because this image looks like this I'm gonna say making love with their hands odd okay and then we have our carousel controls and as you can see the href is targeting a non-existent carousel so I'm all I'm going to batch edit those like so I'm just gonna say home those will be good. This is the previous, uh, as you can see, slide prev for previous, and then slide next, that will slide it uh, back one and forward one. And then just have the icons here and the screen reader text. So if you're using a screen reader, it will actually say previous or next. And then I'm gonna save, and then we should see that in our demo. And here it is. We have our captions, we have the indicators here, the image. If I were to click forward or back, it will actually start sliding. And you can see we have the captions, the images are there, they're pretty, they, they look good. Down came the rain, wash the spider out, making love with their hands. And then if you click these indicators, they will actually scroll through as well. So, okay, great, we did our carousel. Now up next, in, well, in this tutorial right here, we're gonna jump down and start coding the cards. And what I mean by that uh, is this specific section right here instead of what we do kind of services looking section where we have three cards and as you can see they're all the same height and that's what's cool about cards uh, it uses either flexbox or just some other css to achieve that look if you're not losing using flexbox so we're going to jump in and we're going to code these up in the documentation here to learn more about the cards you just head to your components i believe let me just yep components and then card and then this has everything about cards. And car, a card is a flexible, extensible content container. Uh, and it has a ton of options, and you could do a ton of stuff with cards. And here's a very basic example of a card, and you could probably get some ideas just from looking at this, what you'd wanna do with it. The basic markup that you can copy and paste. Different content types, you could put lists in here with different card links. And we got the markup there. Literally a basic card that just has three list items. 
So as you can see, this replaces uh, the wells. It replaces uh, a number of other things within Bootstrap 3 uh, with just the card, which is pretty cool. And so it saves, uh, it saves a little bit of space uh, in the CSS for them to build, but it also just kind of makes it a little bit more flexible for you to use. And you can just use cards for a ton of different things, as you can see here. Here's some more examples. You can do different sizing. You could center, you could left and right align, uh, the text and the buttons and everything like that. You can add headers and footers. So if you had featured content or if you had a little, little, a little news article and you wanted to feature that or something like that. Uh, another subtle example, quotes. This is a little bit different. If you have like a, I don't know, you're featuring a tweet and it says featured tweet and then two days ago you could pull that from Twitter and then you can have the tweet and the link to the tweet, so on and so forth. You can have image caps as they call them on the top or the bottom. Image overlays, you can actually overlay an image uh, over the text if you wanted to do that. Inverted text, and these are just built in. You can obviously style it to whatever you want. You're not just uh, limited to blue, green, and, and orange, and red, but these are just the built-in kind of styles uh, that are available to you. You can use groups. This is what we're gonna be using actually, groups, which um, allow the height of the cards to actually display in the same this is the same height. Whereas uh, before, if you were to do something like this, the three column sort of width, you, uh, the border of this one would, would be here, and this one would be here, and this one would be here, and it would be all uneven. With card groups, it kind of changes that. They also have decks, card decks. So it's kind of like a group, but they're separate. They're not in the same group, but they all have the same height, as you can see. Uh, you also have columns to go for kind of a masonry-like column layout where the um, where the cards are kind of like interspersed throughout, but they all kind of maintain a really cool layout. We're actually going to be using this exact demo here. And I believe that's all for the cards. So as you can see, there's a ton that you could do with the cards. It's really cool. Uh, now we're going to, we're going to jump into our code editor here and we're going to code that first set of cards, the what we do section I'm calling it. So we're going to go ahead and add a section with the ID of what we do. And then we're going to add uh, a div with the class of section dash content. And that is a custom class. We're going to be styling that in our CSS just to give a little bit of space in the section content and then a container. And then we're going to add a level two heading and a paragraph with the class of lead. And then level two will just say what we do. And then I'm just going to add some lorem ipsum in here. Nothing crazy. And now we're just going to go for a basic bootstrap grid using rows and columns. So that would be row. And then we're going to add a call dash small dash 12. In there, I'm going to add a card group because we're going to use groups of cards. And then a card, we're going to add a card. This is the markup for a card. Now I wanted to hand code this out so you could see how it works because it's new. Um, rather than just copying it, pasting it from the docs. I want you to kind of see the uh, conventions of coding and hand coding these cards, at least one example. And then we're going to add a card block. And then in the card block, we're going to start off with the level four heading with the class of card dash title. You could add a uh, level three heading, level one, level six, whatever it is, but it has to have the class of card title. And I'm just going to say strategy and planning. And then I'm going to add a level six heading with the class of card dash subtitle, a built in class. And it's also going to have um, uh, the text of support card subtitle. And then that would be it for the card, that card block. And then we're going to add a, an image after that card block. So image, the source will be image uh, chalkboard. And we'll just say a chalkboard as the alt text. After the image, we're going to add another card block. And then in there, we're going to add a paragraph with the class of card dash text. Uh, just a, a, a line of lorem ipsum. I'm just going to delete some of this out here. After card text, we're going to add a button and it's going to have the type of button class of BTN, BTN dash success. 
dash outline. This is a new bootstrap style. You can have outline buttons, which is really cool. I really like the outline button style. Uh, and I've always just kind of made my own outline buttons, but they're built into bootstrap now, which is really cool. And I'll show you what that looks like in a moment. And this is also going to pull up a modal window. Uh, so I'm just going to add the attributes to connect a modal window. It's not going to work right away, but uh, this is what you're going to need to add anyway. So data dash toggle equals modal. This is all bootstrap attributes, by the way. Data dash target equals, and this is going to be uh, which modal window are you trying to target? We're going to call it my modal, and that's what the ID will be of the modal window that we add. And the text will be learn more. Okay, and then after that card block, um, I believe we're done with that card. So just save that and we'll see what that looks like so far. Okay, so we have the card here and it's huge and it's crazy. Uh, it has the card styles as you can see, but uh, obviously very undesirable looking. And we remedy that with a little bit of CSS. I think what's causing this issue actually is um, the images are just, because these are actually quite large images. If you were to export the images as something smaller, like 200 pixels wide or 400 pixels wide, then it would just uh, be the size, the, the card would be the size of the image, but I want it to be uniform. So I'm gonna use CSS to basically uh, tell um, images to be max width of 100%. And that's a pretty common responsive uh, style and Bootstrap took that out of their, C their native CSS uh, style sheet so you can add it yourself if you want. And I usually add it for responsive sites. Image max width 100%. That means the image will will basically scale um, max width 100%. So if, if you needed it to go smaller, it would shrink down to that, which is what we want it to do. So I'm gonna do that and refresh. I don't know if it's gonna do anything yet. As you can see, it made the max width of the browser. But when I add more cards, it's going to actually shrink uh, appropriately. So we're gonna go back to our brackets or our code editor in our index um, HTML file here. And I'm gonna add another card. So I'm gonna copy this card and I'm gonna paste that card right after the first one. Just simply change a few things here. This one's gonna say creative and design. And I'm just gonna leave that subtitle. You could, you could change it to whatever you want. And I'm gonna uh, change this image from chalkboard to working.jpg. And let's find out what it looks like on the laptop. Okay, I'm just going to say that alt text is working on a laptop. And lorem ipsum, good enough. Uh, I'm going to leave that as as, as well. Um, maybe I will make the lorem ipsum text longer so you can see the example of how the text can be long in one card and short in the others, but they'll maintain the same height within the group. I'm going to save that. I'm going to copy this card one more time and paste it below. So we have three cards, and this last one will be called Programming and Technical. I'm going to change this image from working to programming.jpg, and that is uh, just more fingers on a keyboard. Let's just say fingers typing on a keyboard. And then this uh, lorem ipsum will just make a little bit shorter something like this and then I will save now let's see what happens in the browser three cards full width like so and if I were to grow this browser or shrink it they look like they're just totally full width so they're all maintaining pretty much the same sort of height uh, and width here but I think I'm gonna want these not just full width like so I'm gonna want them within an actual um, container I think what I did was I closed the container after this what we do text and I left it open here so it's just not actually working uh, properly. So let's go back to our markup here and container. Yeah, you can see I closed it there. Now if you caught that before I did, great. You are smarty pants. So I'm gonna need to tab that row in. Oh, let's find out where it is. Row, there we go, that one. I'm gonna tab that in and I'm going to actually close the container after the row. So that would be right here. So I will close the container right there. And now we should be in, this, in the right uh, grid. There we go. And those are the cards, the cards, three cards. As you can see, they're all the same height, which is really cool. 
despite having different height, uh, different length of text. That's just some very basic examples of the cards. Like I said, go to the cards um, documentation here in the components of the uh, Get Bootstrap website and play around with all the different options for the cards because there are a ton. And I didn't wanna just make a site with all the different card examples because you could just play around with them right here. We are gonna be playing with, around with some more cards though coming up uh, after this About Me section. We're gonna be doing just a little latest news section uh, with that uh, masonry style layout. Pretty straightforward. So we're gonna do those up next and, uh, and then we'll work into our next project. See you there.